Hey guys, so I actually have a finished object to show you today. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about something to do with knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. Today I'm gonna to talk about spinning. I have been spinning. I am feeling so good about it too. <laughs> So as you know, I have not been here for a couple of weeks because I've been taking my family to do summer things. And so we took them to Pender Island for a weekend and we also went camping for a week. And so during that whole time, I was able to knit this. Ta-da! So this is The Shift. This is The Cowl by uh, Andrea Mowry. This is just as it is flat. It hasn't been seamed yet, but the idea is that you take this shape here and you sew these two sides together and then it becomes a cowl that you basically wear like so Ta -da! i'm so excited about this so what is this this is the cowl that she designed like many many years ago it's been on my list uh, to make for a while now and i haven't um, the original pattern here it specifies uh, spin cycle yarn dyed in the wool i think it is Yes, so it's dyed in the wool. And many, many years ago at one of those TNA shows, I happened to get two balls of Spin Cycle dyed in the wool. And so initially I had started knitting with this, but then I thought, I can spin. I have so much hand spun. I can spin something like this. And so I did. I basically looked at what this yarn is, how it's sort of made. It's a two ply yarn, looking at the thickness of it. It's about a sport weight sort of yarn. And um, so trying to replicate that yarn with my spinning. And initially I'd spun some yarn that was just, it was too thick. Um, I've spun some other yarn here that's again, too thick. And then started to move into getting the right weight. So this is probably about the right weight of yarn, but I didn't like the color. And so I finally settled on some skein. So this one, I just recently spun. This one is the Aurora colorway in Polworth and Silk. And um, I have been working really, really hard on improving the feel of my yarns over the past year, like focusing on making it loftier, airier, um, more consistent, just doing, trying to do a lot of things to help improve my spinning. And so this skein, I was really super proud of. Um, this is a two ply skein, approximately sport weight, using these colors that are gonna work really, really well, but I did not want to put it into this particular cowl because I didn't think the colors were going to work. So this one is on hold right now. And so I had a bunch of other colors here. So this one is throwback. This is basically from this fiber. So this is the Polworth and Silk fiber in this color, which is called throwback. And then the other color that I have in here is this one. This is called Celestial, and that comes from this. So you might have seen on Instagram, there's a photo of me sort of spinning, concentrated on spinning, because the whole idea was I had this yarn and I had this yarn ready to go. And in order to make the cowl, I need three different colors of yarn. And so like two days before we left on the trip, I was just mad spinning to make enough yarn so that I could take it with me on the trip. And so that's what this skein is. So this is the Celestial. So the last color here is this color that's called Pacific Spirit, which is this color. This is like an older color that we did long, long time ago. Um, and so this was in my teaching bin of fiber. So I was using that. So that's where this came from. But you can see sort of how they've all worked up together. See, we start in this corner up here and then we're knitting diagonally down this direction. And so there's like a big chunk here where you can see this throwback, this orangey throwback color. And then down here, you can see sort of the blue. That's this celestial color down here. And so like now knowing how this entire thing comes together and how it's all knit and how the colors blend and how the mosaic, it's a basically a slip stitch technique so that you're only seeing some of the colors, some of the time. And so they, they create this sort of uh, colors popping out and colors going into the background sort of feel. And so now that I know how this all works, I wanna make another one. <laughs> 
And I, that way I can sort of uh, have a better idea of where all of these colors could be placed and how they might interact together. But I do love what's happening here. This is basically a whole teal and orange thing going on with this this throwback color, kind of orangey color, and then this sort of tealy blue color, these two interacting together, I feel like has been super, super fun in here. And uh, I also really love the start of this, you know, seeing the olive color that's in the background, uh, seeing how that fades into the background while some of the other colors from this throwback color were pushing out. This whole thing has been mesmerizing, mesmerizing to knit uh, because every row you just don't know what's going to happen because you don't know what colors are coming up in the yarn you don't know what colors um how they're going to interact because there's two different colors that are constantly shifting and so those constantly shifting colors you just don't know where they're going to align and what's going to happen so you know there's one section in here where the blues and greens of two different colorways are kind of mixing and i was thinking oh there's too much mixing going on there but you just it it, it, it moves through <laughs> So this has been super fun to do. Now, this is all sport weight yarn. And so I was looking at the next pattern that she made, which is also, these are also from a couple years ago, but this is the night shift. So this is the uh, shawl version of the same project. Shawl version using the same kind of um, slip stitch motif, but this one has six colors. So whereas the original, So the original one, this shift one, has three colors in sport weight. This one has six colors in worsted weight. And so I think that this is going to be my next challenge because along with um, trying to spin more consistently, trying to spin loftier yarn, one of the other things that I have been having a bit of you know trouble with is that I spin really fine. And I've gotten to the point where I'm spinning so fine that it's it's almost verging on lace weight all the time and it's too fine. So I have to consciously thicken up the yarn to make it a easier weight to knit. The other thing about it is you don't actually need that much yarn. So I spun 50 grams of this particular yarn and I have 25 grams left from making this cowl. So with these three yarns, this is all my leftover yarn. I actually have enough to make a whole other cowl. They don't take that much yarn actually so this has all been really promising really fun uh something that's really gotten me back into wanting to spin something it's wanting to spin something that's fun that's colorful that's playful and then being able to enjoy the colors as you knit them and then plus the pattern itself is super easy to remember um, and so I always know where I am in the pattern I know how much more I have to knit uh it's it's been really just a really fun thing to make. <laughs> so I mentioned last week that we're gonna be starting a spinning study group this fall. And part of that is because this is all kind of triggered by a lot of the desire to try to improve our spinning technique. Um, you know, we've been spinning, I've been spinning for many, many years. And a lot of times, you know, I'm sitting down and I'm spinning and I'm making yarn and I'm watching TV and I'm making yarn, I'm making yarn. And then I, I don't, think about a lot of the things that I'm doing while I'm spinning. A lot of those things become unconscious or subconscious or, you know, I just don't really notice them and I'm not really mindful about what is happening between my fingers as I'm spinning. And so one of the things that I have sort of um, learned over this past year, having many, many spinning instructors come into the studio here to film with us for the School of Sweet Georgia, one of the things that I learned is um, from Kim McKenna. So she's teaching a class for us called the nuances to uh, spinning better yarn. Nuances to spinning better yarn. And I think that that word nuances is so vitally important because it's about the little, little tiny things that you may not notice and you may not realize, but that they actually affect your yarn at the end of the day. And so she showed and she demonstrated a whole bunch of techniques in order to help prepare your fiber, to make the fiber much more consistent so that it drafts more smoothly, so that way when you spin your yarn, it's more consistent, more lofty, more even, so that the yarn at the end of the day will be better. 
<laughs> so that when you go to knit it, there, there's gonna be fewer inconsistencies. And it wasn't so much about controlling placement of color. That's a whole different topic. Um, and, I, and I teach about that topic, but hers is very much about preparing all of the fiber ahead of time so that we, when you do spin, it is better yarn. So yeah, here we have um, a little chunk of fiber that has been prepared in a way where it's going to be really loose, really airy, really fluffy. You know, this has been, it's been sort of um, combed so that way it's ready to spin and it's going to stay light and airy and fluffy. And all of this stuff, I always used to think, oh, it's not really necessary. You know, just you grab the fiber and then kind of spin from the top and then I'm making yarn and I was feeling really really good about this but now learning about opening up the fiber pre-drafting it adding the air back into the fiber um, you know restoring a lot of natural crimp all of these things these tiny little decisions add up to better yarn at the end of the day so it's kind of like when we talk about weaving um, you know people who are weaving they really want to get to the point where you're throwing the shuttle and I I try to remind people that the whole process is weaving right like dressing the loom winding the warp threading the heddle slaying the reed all of those little activities are part of the weaving process throwing the shuttle and sitting there and making the cloth that's one part of it but it's not the whole thing it's not weaving all of the activities of weaving are weaving. And so I'm coming around to this idea that spinning is not just sitting there drafting and making yarn. Spinning also encompasses everything from how you prepare the fiber ahead of time, how you dress a distaff, like how you um, fluff or strip or prepare or all of those kinds of things to prepare your fiber. That's also part of the spinning process. And so I'm coming around to um, incorporating that sort of mindset as I go to sit down and spin now. So that time spent pre-drafting is not time wasted. It's part of the spinning process. So just another way to look at all of that. Now, if you're interested in joining us, we are gonna be doing a spinning study group starting September 1st, and that happens at the School of Sweet Georgia. We have a study group set up, and then we will have some guidance every week for September and October to lead you through some of these exercises to try to also improve your spinning. So if you're interested, you can come and sign up and join us there. We're doing a back to school special right now as well. So you can find that at the school of And uh, hopefully you'll be inspired to make something, make something fun. I highly recommend making this because this is a really fun way to get back into spinning, into making something that you will want to play with, want to make, want to, yeah, want to explore color with and all that kind of stuff, this. But I think for myself, I'm going to work on this project. I'm going to spin six different colors, worsted weight, lots of fun colors, and then knit them all together. And so that's what I'm going to be doing this fall. So that is basically it for today. If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to hear more content like this, please do hit subscribe. And we come here every Friday and we talk about something to do with knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing, something to do with the fiber arts, craft and color. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye for now.